problem, we have a wheel where we apply a moment and this wheel starts spinning and it starts dragging a block um, along a distance. And the block and the wheel are connected by a spring. Um, we need to find what is the angular velocity of the disk after the center of mass g has moved 0.5 meters um, to the left, uh, given all of the properties of the system. So the block having uh, friction with the um, bottom surface, a spring connecting the two uh, systems, um, and then a wheel rotating without slipping at the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first draw a free body diagram of the system uh, just to see all of the forces. So our first uh, free body, we're going to split it into two obviously, our first free body diagram being that of the wheel um, and uh, we're going to draw all of the forces. So the first force um, is the gravitational force um, that's going to occur at the center of gravity and this is Fg um, of D, obviously. Um, and um, then we have a normal force at the bottom. This is going to be called N of D. And then we have a friction force uh, directed in this direction called F, F of D. Okay. And then we have the force of the spring that pulls towards the right. And this we'll call the force of the spring, F of S. And then here, a moment is applied um, in the counterclockwise direction. And this moment, um, spin, is what is essentially what we're, the energy that we're putting into the system to make this whole system rotate. Okay? Now, if we move to the block on the right, we have a rectangle. Um, and we have our gravitational force, like always. Um, this one's a different one than uh, what the wheel has. So this is going to be Fg of P. Um, and then we have, again, a normal force that points upwards, N of P. And then we have a force of friction, which points to the right because the bl block is sliding towards the left, which is... Um, F, F of P, and then we have our spring force, which pulls, actually we can draw it on the side, um, which pulls everything like this. And this is the same magnitude as F of S, because the spring has, can just carry one force, and it's whatever force is on one side is carried by the other side. Okay, so now that we have our free body diagram, um, it's going to simplify um, we can see what forces are acting, and you'll see why we really need that later. Um, but this is still a work energy problem. Uh, and so with work energy, we need to define two states um, and then compare the energy, equate the energies between these two states and adding or subtracting any work that is non-conservative that is lost out of the system or put into the system. Um, so, in this case, the initial state we're given, everything is resting. Um, so uh, initially, um, there's no kinetic energy. Um, and then after a while, after we put this, we add this moment and the system starts moving, after the G has moved five meter, 0 0.5 meters towards the left, then we're going to be left with some kinetic energy. So the energy that we've added into the system from the moment um, has been turned into kinetic energy, both of rolling for the um, for G, and then P is going to be sliding. But some of this energy will also be lost because there is friction. So as you can see, this problem is quite complex, and there's many aspects to it. And to keep track of everything, it's really important that we draw this free body diagram, and that we calculate, we separate the two states, and calculate all of the energies for the two states. So we're going to start with state number one. And this is um, when it's resting. So initially it's resting. So T1 is going to be equal to zero joules. No energy, no kinetic energy. And we're also going to draw our datum uh, right um, over here. So right along the center of gravity. So in this case, we're going to have no potential energy. Um, so 
I'm going to write it next to it, v1 is equal to zero joules. Okay, because the spring is unstretched, so no, no energy stored in the spring, and um, there's no, everything is aligned with the datum, so there's no energy, um, there's no potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy. Then we have state number two. Okay, and state number two is the final position of uh, G moving 0 0.5 meters left. Okay, so in this final position, as I said, we're going to have some kinetic energy. So the potential energy is still going to be zero because nothing has moved up or down in terms of gravitational potential energy. So we can scrap the gravitational potential energy portion, um, but we are going to have some uh, spring potential energy. So we'll leave that for later. For now, let's just look at the kinetic energy. So T2 is the kinetic energy at two um, is going to be equal. We're going to have some kinetic energy due to the um, wheel rolling, so one half i g d um, omega d squared. So this is the energy, the kinetic energy due to the rotation of g. Uh, then we have um, some kinetic energy due to the translation of g. So one half m g v g d squared. And then we have some kinetic energy due to the translation of the block to the right, so the block P. So one half MP V G P squared. And again, uh, G D means uh, the center of gravity of D. G P the center of gravity of P. Okay, same thing with G D here. It's I about G um, of D. Okay, always the center of gravity. So this is going to be our kinetic energy um, for um, state number two. Okay, now we don't know these expressions. We don't know omega d, we don't know vgd, we don't know vgp. Um, so we're going to have to work them out. Um, but essentially what we're looking at this problem when everything starts moving, um, you're going to start with uh, everything stationary. So initially, we have a static friction coefficient, um, which, um, as you can see, is larger than the kinetic friction coefficient. So as this applies a moment, this is going to start rolling. This spring is going to start stretching. But this block here will not be moving. Okay, And that is because this block here um, has a friction force that is holding it in place. Now, as this spring is stretched more and more, this force here increases more and more. Um, so the force pulling. And at certain point, this force here will overcome the friction force that points backwards. Okay, and once that is overcome, this block starts moving. Okay, now once it starts moving, we, we don't have a static friction coefficient anymore, but we have a dynamic friction or kinetic friction coefficient, which is lower. So that means this friction force for uh, the same normal force will be lower, meaning that this block is actually going to accelerate a little bit and this spring is going to compress a bit more. So the spring is going to start compressed like this, then it's going to get longer, and then after a while, after this starts moving, it's going to shrink and get a bit shorter. Still longer than the original length, but a bit shorter because of that um, change in friction coefficient. Okay. Um, but um, here, we're not looking at the transient response, so we're not looking at every point in time, we're just looking at the difference between the beginning and the end. So this will not really uh, matter too much, because when we're looking at the um, our second point, that is solely going to involve the kinetic friction coefficient, because everything will have already been moving. Um, and so this transition doesn't really matter but you do need to be aware that this does occur. Okay, so um, at state two, um, the package will move at a constant velocity. Okay, 
So when, the con when we have a constant velocity, that means that the acceleration uh, is going to be zero. There's no acceleration. Um, so um, when we do a force balance for these free body diagrams, we know that there will not be an acceleration. Um, and so we can s do our moment balance, sum of force and force balances, and add everything and equate them to zero, which is what we're going to do next. Um, to solve for some of these unknowns that um, we don't know yet and that we'll use later. Okay, so let's start with a sum of forces um, in Y uh, for P. Okay, so sum, sum of forces in Y for P is equal to zero, as I mentioned. This yields uh, NP minus FGP is equal to zero. Okay, um, so FGP um, is just MPG. Um, so we can equate this to NP being equal to MP times G. Okay, and this is pretty self explanatory. So if we plug everything in, we get NP is equal to 5 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared which is equal to um, 49.05 newtons. Okay, so that's gonna be NP. Um, and again, we're gonna need these values for our friction forces, which we'll then use later. Okay, um, then we have um, FFP um, being equal to mu K N P. Okay, so this is just the friction equation. So FFP is equal to uh, mu K, because everything, as I mentioned, is moving, times N of P, which is equal to 0 0.2 times 49.05 Newtons. Um, so our FFP is going to be uh, 9.81 uh, Newtons. Okay, uh, so 9.81. Okay, so then we have our sum of forces in the x direction of P, and this is going to also be equal to zero. Okay, so this yields uh, F of P is equal to F of S, or the spring force. So this means that F of S is equal to uh, 9.81, okay? Uh, now, the force of the spring is also equal to um, F of S is equal to KX, uh, okay? Um, so this X here represents the change in length of the spring due to the force. So if you apply force to a spring, it extends. Okay, so that X represents that extension of the spring. And since we're, we're told that the spring starts from, a, um, from its original unstretched length, then um, that, del that whole delta X is the whole um, change in length. And we don't have to subtract L naught. Okay, uh, so we know F of S because um, we've just calculated it. This is um, 9.81 Newtons. Uh, we know k, so we can actually find x. So x is equal to fs over k, which is equal to 9.81 newtons over k, which is 0. Point, uh, sorry, 100 newtons per meter. So x is actually equal to 0. 0.0981 meters. Okay, so this is how much the spring stretches. Okay, so if the spring stretches by that much, um, that means that the package moves 0 0.981 meters less than the disk. Okay, that's because if you go into this diagram over here, if this thing moves and for the first 0 0.098 meters, this doesn't move, then this will have moved more than this. Okay, so when we count 
0.5 meters of movement for this, that doesn't equate to 0.5 meters of movement for this because part of it goes into stretching that spring, which takes up a bit of distance. Distance. Okay, so that's why we need to keep into account that delta x, which is um, is very sneaky. Um, next, um, we're going to look at the rotation of that of g. Um, and how much uh, distance is traveled, how much rotation occurs uh, after um, g travels 0.5 meters. So if we look at this circle here, um, again, it's pinned over here at the bottom uh, because there's, we're told there is no slip here. Um, so if this has to travel um, 0.5 meters, uh, we know that um, this radius uh, cro omega cross r is um, the distance uh, is omega theta cross r is the distance traveled by this point here. Um, so since everything is orthogonal, we can just say that theta is going to be equal to um, d over r. Okay, where d is um, the distance that is traveled um, and um, r is the radius of the from the point of no rotation, which is the bottom, to g. Okay, so it's again the radius of that circle uh, of g. Um, so theta is going to be equal to 0 0.5 meters over um, 0 0.3 meters, which is equal to um, 5 over 2 uh, radians. Okay, so this is how much g rotates. And this will be useful later uh, when we calculate the work due to the moment. Okay, um, so if we go back to um, this, we said that this was how much um, was traveled, um, how much less the block traveled um, with respect to g. So we can actually solve for the distance of that p travels, okay? So the distance that p travels is actually equal to that 0 0.5 meters minus 0 0.0981 meters, which equals to uh, 0 0.4019 meters, okay? This is a simple subtraction. So again, d is the distance that g travels. Um, so this is again, we can say dg. Um, dp here is the distance that p travels, which is dg minus this spring stretching term. Okay, so now we have um, found um, the forces, so the friction force. Um, so from this diagram here, we have found um, this friction force, which we need because this creates a work. We have found the distance this friction force travels. We have found um, the, um, so we found Vg, which is the um, linear velocity of this block, which gives us some kinetic energy at state two. Um, Vg here, sorry, V uh, P here is different, is the same, sorry. Um, and then we have, found we need to find omega um, which is energy related creates energy related to this rotation over here uh, and th this is all included in these terms then we found here this friction force here um, there's no friction so this FFD does not create um, any um, any moment because there's no slipping right so if there's no slipping that force doesn't um, go along a distance. Um, so this f of, f of d doesn't add work or dissipate work. Um, and so now we're ready to add everything up um, and do some calculations. So first let's calculate um, the work due to the moment. So uh, u of m, so this is energy that we're putting into the system, is equal to the moment uh, or the couple times theta. Uh, which is equal to uh, 
uh, which is um, given in the uh, question, and it's in Newton meters, uh, times um, 5 over 3, 5 over 2, sorry, radians. And this is um, the angle theta that we just found. Okay, so uh, this is going to be equal to 4.905 joules. Then we can find the um, work that is um, lost or dissipated due to friction. This we'll call U of F. And this, as I mentioned, is a combination of all the friction forces, U F F of D um, plus um, U uh, F F of um, P. But as I mentioned, this doesn't travel a distance, so it's zero. Um, it is just going to be um, UFF of P. And again, it's a force times a distance. So it's going to be force FF of P um, times DP. Okay, and as we I mentioned, we just found DP. It's not the same distance traveled as G um, because the spring stretches. And so this is going to be equal to 9.81 newtons times um, 0 0.4019 meters, which is equal to 3.943 joules. Okay, and these are all the energies that are added or dissipated, so non-conservative forces. Um, now we're ready to take our full sum of um, energies and equate state one to state two while adding those non-conservative forces. So T1 plus V1 is plus the sum of non-conservative uh, from one to two is gonna be equal to uh, T2 plus V2, okay? And so we can say that T1 and V1 are both zero because um, there's no, um, there's none of them. Um, so zero plus zero. Then we calculated these two non-conservative works, but we have to watch for the signs of these. Um, so first, let's look at um, UM. UM is work that we are adding into the system, so it's going to be positive. So plus 4.905, okay, joules. So this work here, we're adding into the system, so that's why it's positive. The force due to friction is dissipative work, so that's why this one has to have a negative sign, negative 3.943 joules, okay? Um, so that's a negative work um, because it's dissipated. Uh, it's out of the system. And this is going to be equal to, we said there's nothing, no other works, it's going to be equal to... Um, one half i g d squared omega d squared uh, plus one half m d v g d squared plus one half m p v g p squared plus one half k x squared. So like I mentioned, um, sorry, I should have added it here, V2 is going to be equal to uh, 1 half Kx squared. Because um, potential energy is still the same, but we do have that extra stretch in the spring. Okay, so this is just, um, this whole term is um, I2 plus, uh, T2 plus V2. All right, so now um, we can um, start plugging things in and solving for omega. But as you can see in this um, equation, we actually don't have everything in terms of omega. So the masses are all given, but VGD, VGP, we don't know these quantities. Um, so we can actually solve for VGD in terms of omega because um, we know that this is pinned uh, over here. Um, so if this is pinned, we can find um, velocity of g, which is this center point here, um, and p here, we can find it by using omega equals to r, um, uh, v equals to r cross omega. Okay, so um, 
if we go down here, we can use um, V is equal to omega cross R. Um, but since we know everything is orthogonal, we can just directly multiply. So V G D is going to be equal to omega D times R. And this R is the distance from uh, here to here. So it's again R, the radius of that circle. So we can actually plug this directly in with R being equal to 0 0.3 meters. So this is going to be equal omega D times 0 0.3 meters. Now we can also say that V uh, G D is equal to V G P because we said nothing is accelerating. Everything must have the same velocity. The velocity of this must be equal to this. Okay, so then we can substitute uh, this equation here, omega d, um, into um, here and into there. So we eliminate those linear velocity terms and everything is in terms of omega. The last thing we need to do is we need to find uh, i, um, which is uh, one half m um, l r squared. Um, so that's just the inertia i g d is equal to one half m r squared, which is equal to one half times uh, two point five kilograms times zero point three uh, meters squared. Okay. Uh, so after this, we have so we have everything in the equation. Um, and everything is in terms of omega d, um, and we can solve this quadratic equation and solve for omega d. So let me plug everything in and solve for the final answer. 0 0.9624 is equal to um, 1 half times one half times 2.5 kilograms times 0 0.3 meters squared uh, omega d squared uh, plus one half times 2.5 kilograms times 0 0.3 omega d squared plus one half times Five kilograms. This is the uh, block to the right uh, times 0 0.3 omega d squared plus one half times 100 newtons per meter times 0 0.0981 meters squared. Sorry, the square goes outside of the bracket like that. Okay, so if we um, solve this equation, we get 0 0.9624 is equal to uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.05625 omega d squared uh, plus 0 0.1125 omega d squared plus 0 0.225 omega d squared plus 0 0.4812. And all of these terms are in joules because this is energy. And if we solve this quadratic equation, we get that omega d is equal to 1.1 radians per second. And this is our final answer.